Armory Disc Golfers, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about why you, yes you, need to be throwing understable discs. Let's get into it. So in my last video, I talked about throwing consistent and boring disc golf, and one of the things that I mentioned was how if you throw stable discs, they're more consistent and you can get more reliable results out of them. However, there are plenty of good reasons for you to bag understable discs, and so I wanted to cover that today. This applies to beginners, advanced players, all the way up to the elite pros, so everyone has something for them in this video. That being said, let's jump right into it. One of the great things about understable discs is that they go straighter for longer. I'm sure that you've experienced this frustration, especially when you're first starting out, of whenever you throw, the disc just wants to dump to the left on a backhand or dump to the right on a forehand. If you grab an understable disc, it'll push straighter for longer. This goes for beginners as well as advanced players whose distance might be further, but the concept is still the same. I've got a tunnel to hit. I'm gonna throw an understable disc straight at it. Nice and straight, birdie looks. Something that excites people the most about understable discs, whether you're a beginner or advanced, understable discs go farther than stable discs. Because understable discs want to stay straighter for longer than overstable discs, instead of fading out as early, they're either still turning in the air or pushing straight before they hit their fade section of their flight path. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna to try to throw the same angle, the same speed, as best as I can with a Mint Discs Phoenix, which is a very overstable disc that's not really supposed to go very far, and a Lone Star Disc Lariat, which is a pretty understable disc. Now I threw those about the same power. I mean, you're just gonna have to trust me on that. And you can see the differences in distance there. The Phoenix is a lower glide, more overstable disc. It wants to get left, which can be helpful. But if you're just looking for raw distance, grabbing an understable disc, same angle, same power, it'll flip up and go more than an overstable disc will. I know that Paul Macbeth and Calvin Heimberg and Ricky Wysocki are throwing discs that are very overstable for their max distance drivers but understability is relative to who's throwing them. You might pick up a Lariat and think that it's overstable. You might pick up a Phoenix and flip it. If you do, come see me because that's seriously impressive. These overstable discs that these pros are throwing at their arm speed do have some turn to them. You can see that as they fly through the air. So if you see Paul Macbeth, Chris Dickerson throwing forces or Calvin throwing Halo destroyers and you want that flight path, you're probably not going to get it from a force or a halo destroyer. Understability is relative to your arm speed. David Wiggins Jr. and Simon Lazat both threw really understable discs to set the world distance record. Garrett Gerthy wins the US Distance Championship over and over throwing katanas. They're not the most consistent discs, especially at full power, which is why pros don't throw them as much as overstable discs. But if it comes to just raw distance and nothing else matters, understable discs go farther for them just as well as someone like me. Something else that's interesting about understable discs that you may not know is that they can fade more than overstable discs, particularly on spike hyzers. Because overstable discs want to hyzer and get to the ground, if you throw them on sharp spike hyzers, then instead of fading out, they'll go up and they'll come pretty much straight down, which can be helpful. But if you need something that comes out on a sharp hyzer, but then pushes left, like you're in a really wooded area, which I'm not, currently, then you can throw an understable disc and instead of just dumping straight to the ground, it'll want to pan out and glide to the left instead of just coming straight to the ground. Pretty much straight up and straight down with some cool bird effects in the background. Now I'm going to try to throw this one also straight up and straight down and we'll see how far left it fades. You see it flips up and it's going way farther left than the Phoenix. So if you're pinched off in the woods or something and you have to throw a spike hyzer, maybe you need an understable disc, not a stable disc if you really need it to fade. 
Another great reason to throw understable discs is, especially when you're first starting out, you're probably more comfortable with either a backhand or a forehand. For the sake of argument, let's say for right now it's a backhand. But then you run into holes like this one where the shape is straight and then finishes right. You'd want to throw a forehand typically here, but you can grab an understable disc and have it emulate that flight of a forehand by having the disc flip and turn throughout its path. We got it to go straight and then fade to the right with an understable disc. Another great thing about throwing understable discs is you can get them to do so many different things, more so than overstable discs. Overstable discs want to hyzer at the end pretty much regardless of what you do, unless you're throwing them on real hard cut roller angles. They want to keep coming back. But understable discs are cool because if you throw them lower power, they can either hold a hyzer, or if you throw them a little more firm, they'll flip up and push straight. Or if you throw them hard, they can flip all the way over. I just threw this disc on a shot that went from hyzer, flipped all the way, and finished right. Now I'm gonna throw it a little less power, have it go on a hyzer, push straight, and finish straight instead. Get in the basket. Go in. Whew. Good work, bud. Sometimes the shot shape just calls for an understable disc. Here, there's a wall of trees blocking the path to the left, more or less. If I throw a stable or overstable disc on the right side, it can push to the backside tree line, but then it's either going to hit the tree line or fade out too sharp. But with a more understable disc, I can have it hyzer flip, push straight, and then its fade will be more gentle as it keeps pushing forward instead of just directly left, and hopefully I get a better look at the basket. Flip up a little bit, and then a pushing forward fade to get a look for birdie. I tell you what, I need to start pretending like my tournament rounds are instructional videos because I shoot better in these than I do. <laughs> Perhaps the biggest reason you should be throwing understable discs, especially as a beginner, is that it reveals errors in your form. Now you may have heard this before and not quite understood what people meant, so I'm going to show you. An overstable disc, pretty much regardless of what you do, is going to want to finish on that fade. So it doesn't really matter if you're yanking over on it, if you're rounding, doing whatever, what angle you release the disc on. A destroyer is going to want to go to the left, especially at lower arm speeds. However, if you release an understable disc on these same angles, on these same throws, it's going to show you what's really going on underneath the hood. Now I'm about to throw some shots on Anheuser's. The overstable discs will be pretty much without consequence, but the understable disc, you're really going to be able to tell what I'm doing wrong. I can throw, yank it on an Anheuser, and look, it comes back in the middle of the fairway which may be fine for this round, but it's going to hurt my development as a player. But if I have an understable disc and I throw it on Anheuser, it's gonna turn over and burn. It may look good for the disc to finish in the middle of the fairway, and you may think, oh, well, this is why I need an overstable disc. But what you're doing, assuming I'm trying to throw pretty flat here, is you're cementing in to crank over on overstable discs instead of fixing your angle control upon release. If you just learn Anheuser's instead of Heiser, flat, and Anheuser, you are really limiting yourself on the shot shapes that you can throw, which is going to be huge as you continue to play. A great thing about understable discs is you don't have to throw them as hard. We've talked about them going farther, and I'm sure you've seen advertisements for new discs that are coming out that have effortless glide. And those discs are typically understable discs. A great thing about this is if you're at a hole like this one, which let's play as a double mando, these two trees, I could throw a stable mid-range or putter and really try to hit it flat and throw it firm so it stays straight the whole way or I can relax and throw an understable disc, look forward for longer, not have to worry about throwing it as hard and make sure that I hit the gap. I need to start doing that whenever I actually play this hole. Man, we don't get orange on the ground like this in Texas too often. Understable discs aren't the most thrown discs in my bag. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, I like to throw things with some stability that are very consistent so that in tournament play, I know exactly where they're going every time. But that doesn't mean that understable discs don't have a place in your bag and I and you need to be throwing them. Thank you all for watching. If you like the video, go ahead and drop a like 
comment and let us know what you thought, what you want to see next, and subscribe so you don't miss out on it. If you need to grab an understable disc or any disc, head on over to the armory and equip yourself for whatever the course may throw at you. I'll catch y'all next time.